Is Germany taking the fast track to OER? This is a 2017 status report from the country that nearly missed the call. This is our agenda for today. One, we will tell you about the story so far. Two, we will give you an overview of the new OER program, OER Info. Three, we will take a look into some numbers and figures we get from the OER Atlas. And four, we will try to answer our initial question. My name is Joran Moos Meerholz. I was the founder of the Transferstelle for OER, which now is OER Info, a platform for information and open educational resources in Germany. And I was the program coordinator and the host for several OER events in Germany. My name is Jan Neumann and I'm working for the North Rhine-Westphalian Library Service Center, HPZ, as the project manager for the OER World Map project. And I'm also a member of the um, Educational Advisory Board of the German UNESCO chapter. So what happened so far in Germany? In the beginning, actually, nothing. When it came to OER, Germany was not even on the map. Normally, when we are talking about the story and the history of OER, we begin in 2011 with the open courseware. Take a look into the Wikipedia article on open courseware and you will see that there it says it started in 1999 with the University of Tübingen in Germany. Really? Yes, but actually everyone else forgot about it after that. Everyone from the open education community knows what happened afterwards. We had the UNESCO forum, we had the Olcos report, we had uh, the OECD report, of course Cape Town declaration 10 years ago, but hardly anyone in Germany noticed the importance of these events. That was until late 2011. Then the publishers had the not so good idea to plant a computer program on school computers that should search for illegal copies of digital material. That's why some activists and educators met in Bielefeld in November 2011 at the EduCamp and discussed the idea of building a platform and bringing their own materials and resources together. That's when the term open educational resources started in the debate in Germany. We saw a first white paper on OER in schools in Germany published in April 2012. So while OER was not on the agenda of politics, we had practitioners and activists from different educational sectors discussing OER and first meeting on an OER camp, a bar camp in open educational resources, taking place in Bremen in late 2012. Despite this activity, within the 2012 OECD survey, Germany was the only country which did not consider OER to become an important topic in the future. It turned out they were wrong. We saw some substantial growth in the field of OER in Germany in the following years, including two conferences hosted by Wikimedia Germany with several partners. We saw the first teacher trainings. We had some publications, not too much from the academic field. We had some platforms turning to OER. And last but not least, we had the Bündnis Freie Bildung. It was founded in Berlin and it's something like the Coalition for Open Education Germany. In 2015 we saw a milestone for OER in Germany that was the first 2 million euros in the federal budget and it was with the Federal Ministry for Education and Research. There was a position paper published by the German Ministry and the 16 Länder, so these are like the states of Germany, and it was very optimistic and positive towards OER. OER was explicitly mentioned in the debate on digital learning in our parliament. And last but not least, we had the first money spent on OER for two feasibility studies that were finished in early 2016. 2016 was the breakthrough year or maybe the hype year for OER in Germany. We had the OER festival which took place in Berlin and it was the OER camp which then took place for the fifth time we had a conference, we had the first OER awards and we had the OER atlas and we will tell you about that in a minute from now. Maybe you want to take a short break from this video, you could watch some impressions on YouTube from the OER festival in 2016. And then what everyone was waiting for happened. Projects could apply for funding for their OER projects in Germany. The program Joran just mentioned is called OER Info and is funded by the BMBF, the Federal Ministry of Education and Research. Let's have a look at what this program is all about. The program aims at raising awareness and um, building up knowledge related uh, to OER. The program is based on two pillars. 
On the one hand, an information site will be developed, um, the OER Informationsstelle. On the other hand, 23 multiplier projects will aim at training trainers to spread the skills needed to work in the field of OER. So there's a kind of snowball logic behind the program. Let's speculate what this might lead to. We have 23 projects. If each project manages to educate 200 trainers, then we will have 4,600 OER trainers by the end of 2018. But we shouldn't focus only on the OER info program. There's lots of great stuff going on in the field of OER, which is outside of this program. Just take a look at the program for the OER Festival in 2016. All these logos stand for partners from different educational sectors, from startups to public institutions, and they all already work in the field of OER before the program even started. The next part is on numbers and figures on OER in Germany. And actually, this is not my part. Jan! Here I am. I just took the OER Atlas. It's a publication we did for the OER 2016 festival. We tried to map all the stuff available there. Let's have a look inside and see if we can find some numbers. The first chart shows the distribution of OER activity across Germany. As you can see, the southern lender Bavaria and um, Baden-Württemberg are very active, but also the cities of Berlin and Hamburg and North Rhine-Westphalia. Though this might not be as interesting for you as it is for us. The next chart shows the distribution of the activity across the educational sectors. As you can see, OER is strongest in Germany in the school sectors and most of the activity happened to come from there. But actually, this seems to be changing right now. The higher education sector is catching up. And other sectors, like um, the technical and vocational training sector, is starting to get into OER as well. This chart shows the distribution of subjects on the services which are available. As you can see, the subjects like uh, mathematics and science, ICT, education are most popular. Also, the hum humanities are surprisingly strong. Less common are topics like management, engineering and law. I also like this chart very much. It shows the types of services which you can find in Germany considering OER. What you can say from it is that wikis are very popular. Germany seems to be also in the educational sector, the wiki country. This chart has a look at the used licenses. As you can see, most of the, OER German, of the German OER services use CC BY SA licenses or even the more open CC BY license. I guess this fact is due to um, that Germany entered the OER movement rather late. Summary. Summary. Is Germany really taking the fast track to OER? I think yes it is because we have a broad movement with players from all educational fields involved in the game. But on the other hand, there is no concrete decision that the OER program will be continued after 2018. Yes, but it just has started. You're right, but on the other hand, um, content production has not been funded yet and I'm not sure if it's on the agenda. Yes, but we have a very strong bottom-up approach and very many players really come from the field, from the practice of education that bring in their own resources. Yeah, as far as top-down is concerned, we can say that uh, political decision-making is pretty slow in Germany due to the federal structure of Germany. On the other hand, we have this decentralized structure, which is really helpful in fostering education and innovation in education. And don't forget the publishers. They are always opposing OER. That's true. So what gives us hope? Um, I think we, we have done pretty well with the OER bar camps and um, the conferences. So there's a, bitty, there's a pretty good communication in, within the community. And I think we have to say it. There uh, are competent people within the administrations that know about OER. Yeah, and the national program just started, so we'll see what comes out of it. And last but not least, we have this high priority on digital education today. Germany is late there too. But this might be helpful for the debate on OER. I think so too. This will do the trick. What do you think? We're really looking forward to continuing this discussion with you. <laughs>